faith. What is your take on homosexuality? A timely topic, a good, a good uh, question or topic. Uh, you, you can't, you can't dodge these things, you know. In the church, and we don't formally. The church doesn't try to get out of talking about these things. But, but um, we, the church herself has beautiful documents, magnificent teaching on everything in faith and moral. The problem is middle management. So called. You know, the problem is very often we don't take what we have and use it. You know, give it to the people, make it clear. And that's that's a problem I have. I, I and I got a real problem with that. Okay. Homosexuality is a condition which certainly afflicts a, a number of people, not a small number. It's relatively uh, prevalent and significant. Uh, are they born that way? Quote, you know, you hear that question. I, you know, the, an, an educated person, the most frequent answer an educated person has to give is, I don't know. And, and I don't. Are they born that way? I, I don't know, and it doesn't really matter. See, a lot of these questions that get asked, you know, they ask these questions or pose these things, they, they think they're going to short-circuit you somehow or, or prevent you from, it don't matter. Well, but I was born that way, so... You know, here's how I do it, okay? Uh, now, homosexual sex, okay, I'm not talking about a, an orientation here. If a person from birth or whatever feels that orientation, you know, listen, you know, a man says, I'm just not attracted to women. Uh, I can't help it. I'm attracted to persons or, you know, or women. I'm attracted to persons of the same sex. Okay, uh, you can't be mean about that. You, can, you must be sympathetic. Uh, I, I have great sympathy. I, my heart breaks for them. They have to probably suffer a lot because of this, because, you know, that, that it's not the norm yet, anyway, in this society, you know. But you wonder what it's coming to. You, got, you always have to tell the truth in love. Don't take the easy way out. Um, God loves all human beings, every human being. Does God love the homosexual? You better believe it. Does God love the gay person? You better believe it. He loves them with all his heart. God loves every lesbian and God loves every gay man. Loves them with his infinite fatherly love. No question about that. Just start right there because that's the truth. He loves them. And if God our Father loves them, then I got to love them too. And I do. I don't hate them. Now, you can't hate them and you can't be afraid of them. I've been accosted a few times by person. You're against us. You're homophobic. No, I'm not. Homophobic means you're, you're afraid of homosexuals. I'm not homophobic. I, I'm not afraid of bears and lions. I frequently hunt them <laughs> for fun. So I'm not afraid of homosexuals or anything else. I love you. No, you're against us. You say that what we do is wrong. Well, what you, if, you're, if you're actively having sex with each other, members of the same sex, that's morally disordered. God doesn't want that. And you've got to be pretty blind or stupid to read the Bible and say otherwise in plain English. So, what then? I say, look, what you don't understand is you and I are very much alike. Sometimes they get a glimmer in their eye. No, 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 no. No, no, no. What I mean is you and I are very much alike because you and I are both called to celibacy. You because of the way you say you are and me because of a vow. You see, we're much more alike than you think. And our happiness, our integrity, our peace, our joy is very much dependent on living that perfect chastity in celibacy. You see, you're called to be celibate. If you say that's the way you are, wow, 
That's your cross. You must carry it. Now, many won't accept that, of course. Now, some in the world would say you're equating homosexuality with sin. If you act out and engage in homosexual sex, that is grievous sin. Now, I know some people don't like that. They think that's cruel. I can't help it. You know, it's like my old moral theology professor, Father Rudy, used to say, talking to us uh, on moral theology. I have a soul to save, too. And I'm not going to lose it for you. And so don't expect me to water anything down. You're going to get it right between the eyes. You say, I don't like that tough. That's the way it is. Homosexual sex is gravely disordered. Gravely disordered. It is the first constituent part of mortal sin. Serious matter. Grave matter. Number two, you have to have knowledge. In other words, you have to know that. And um, anyone here now knows it. So you can't get off on saying I didn't have knowledge. Right? Number three, you have to give full consent of the will in the light of that knowledge. All three of those must be simultaneously in place to have a mortal sin subjectively imputed uh, unless you have mitigating circumstances. So it's going to become a bigger and bigger problem. You know, now, you know, Congress is trying to slip in through the war spending bill. They're trying to slip that in about, you know, make it a hate crime if you say anything contrary uh, to homosexual or same-sex marriage. Or any, we, the problem is it's so subjective, I, you know, I don't know what that, what, what that means. You know, uh, I, are, I do know that people are going to jail already in foreign countries for just being faithful to the gospel. It, and it's clear that scripture condemns homosexual sexual behavior. Do not confirm someone in their sins. In other words, I'm going to love them, but I'm going to tell them the truth in love. Uh, here's the way it is, brother, sister. Uh, and, and if they rebel and, uh, you know, like Jesus said, be careful about casting your pearls before swine. Not that they're swine, but anyone, anyone uh, who, who gets a message of morality and throws it back in your face or rebels or, or gets angry or violent or whatever, okay, okay, you know, that's up to you. I, for my part, will tell the truth. And I will not, at the end of my life, have to go and stand before Almighty God and, and, and explain why I was a coward or indifferent because I withheld the truth from my brother or my sister. So that's my take on homosexuality. Got to love them? Tell the truth, you know. If I love my brother, I don't want him to be suffering, you know. If my brother gets cancer or, or, or a disease or an illness or, a, or an accident or something, he's hurt, I don't want to just pat him on the head and say, oh, you're fine, <laughs> you know. Shake it off. Rub some dirt on it. <laughs> you know? No. You know, I got to help him. I got to help him. You know, if he's hurt, I got to love him even more. Now, they, they often refuse to acknowledge that there's anything wrong. That's no different than anybody who's committing sins and refusing to say that it's a sin. Well, I, live, I have sex with my girlfriend, we live together, but, but that's okay, we, you know, we, we have a meaningful relationship, so what's the big deal? Well, <laughs> you'll find out. God doesn't require, or God doesn't cause anybody to sin. God gives sufficient grace to every human being to save their soul, to do good, avoid evil. Sure, it's difficult. Hey, it's difficult for heterosexual people. You know, people that aren't married, you know, they, they're attracted to persons of the opposite sex. Okay. Well, they have, they're called to be chaste. One of the questions said, what about married people? Are married people called to chastity? Yes. Not celibacy, but chastity. Chastity, purity. 
you know, because you're married, that doesn't give you an excuse to be a porno star. You know? There is such a thing, chastity. Now, perfect chastity in celibacy is, is another thing. You know, some of us profess a vow, and, and we live that to give glory to God. Some persons, homosexual persons, are called to live a celibate lifestyle because of they, the way they find themselves. And many don't like it. You know, they, they didn't ask to be that way, they would say. And I sympathize with that. I sympathize with that. But I can't tell someone something that they want to hear when I know it will hurt them, ultimately. And it will. That's a very difficult uh, situation. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Uh, if you have someone in your family, um, love them. Don't shun them. Don't be disgusted with them. Don't, you know, shoo them up. You've got to love them. Gotta love them and pray. Pray the rosary every day. And I'm not gonna go into a big dissertation on why. Just just do it. <laughs> just do it. You know. Like the Nike commercial commercial says, just do it. You know, and if you really want to know why, you get my series on the rosary, on the power of the rosary. It's very short. Not you know, it's not a big series. It's the prayer of the gospel and there's great power in it. You pray the rosary for your children or for your friends. If, if you yourself are afflicted with this, um, I greatly sympathize with the human condition. We, we are all sinners in some way. But I'll tell you, the kiss of death, the denial of sin, when we say that I, that's not a sin, or I'm not in sin, or I, you cut off yourself from God. You know, God's grace is there, his forgiveness is there, you don't want it. Because you refuse to acknowledge your sinfulness, that takes humility and courage. 